guys, it's Laura Lee. I'm back with another episode of Honest Trailers, and this is for the new Beauty and the Beast movie, which I never got around to reviewing, even though I think it's something I really wanted to review, especially since everyone seemed to hate my opinion. So guess what? I'm going to give you a movie review at the end of this. But until then, let's watch Honest Trailers Beauty and the Beast, and then you can turn it off and ignore me later. Okay. Different intro than I remember. Old as 1991. Now, experience it all over again with CGI and celebrities. As yep. Disney reminds us, it's not about how you look. It's what's on the inside of your wallet that counts. Beauty <laughs> and the Beast, again. <laughs> After the Jungle Book used live action to improve on their animated classic, Disney's using live action to just copy their animated classic and see if anyone notices or cares. Turns out, they don't in an mm -hmm. empty spectacle that reminds you how good the original was yeah. and shows you how creepy the original would be if it were real. Yeah. I said I wasn't supposed to move. Uh. <laughs> Return to the Britishest part of France. I remember what? <laughs> Crazy old Maurice. Giving her a sprint in the East Wing. And meet Belle, a beautiful book lover who falls in love with an ugly dude. So, Hermione? Emma Watson Oi. turned out an Oscar-winning role in La La Land for this, but she deserves an Oscar for not laughing every time Dan Stevens showed up in his mocap suit. <laughs> Watch her inhabit this strong female role model who isn't afraid to invent her own washing machine. What's he doing? The laundry. And doesn't need a man to help her express herself, unless that man's name is Otto Toon. Is it Toon? Yes! Otto Toon, you get it. But it's not all a rehash of the original. There's several new tiny crumbs of movie to pick over. Like superfluous backstory, yep. wandering around the woods, diversity, and the play. Kids love the play. Why Plus, was the play in this movie? Song that will have you wondering if you have enough time to take a pee break. No, no, that was the one part of the movie I did love, was the B song. You do. Gaston shines as the aggressive, controlling hairy guy who imprisons Belle's dad, as opposed to the Beast, an aggressive, controlling mm -hmm. hairy guy who imprisons Belle's dad. And if you're mad we reused the same joke we made in our original Honest trailer, then you're not one of the millions of Disney fans who defend this glorified rehash. Blink and you'll miss the reveal of Disney's first openly gay character, assuming you don't count Prince Eric, as LeFou finally comes out of the closet to piss off mm -hmm. everyone. Because gay people don't want their first character to be a sniveling evil weirdo, while homophobes want the scene to be more gay so they can get really hot and bothered. Seriously? That's it? That's the moment they got it banned in Kuwait, Malaysia, and Alabama? I've seen gayer stuff for breakfast. So be Disney's guest at this timeless tale of how it's your inner beauty that matters. The beauty is found within. Even though Belle is hot, the beast is hot, the dresser is hot, the librarian is hot, and even the withered old crone turns out to be hot. Mm -hmm. Because while inner beauty is what really matters, your ugly ass is definitely a curse. <laughs> Starring Miss Wolian, Josh Glad, <laughs> Fabio, Emma Stone's favorite Belle, Obi-Wan, Ian McClockin, and Belle's mom, Miss <laughs> Rose on the grave. Rebooty and the Beast. Oh. Yay, the royal prince is back. But wait, if Gaston had a musket, then this takes place either right before or right after the French mm, Revolution. Yep. Uh-oh. <laughs> Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. My voice makes Morgan Freeman pee his pants. Some King Llama from my iPad. I pooped on the floor like a naughty little chihuahua. People of the world, lend me your energy. <laughs> Whew. Okay. Here's my thing with the new Beauty and the Beast movie. I hated it. There. Shoot me. I hated it. It was terrible. The casting... Except for Ian McGregor and Audra McDonald, the, class, the casting was terrible. It was terrible. The visuals 
like they seemed like in the first trailer like they were going to be stunning but it just ended up being like overwhelming and kind of disturbing like they said like no it ugh. they didn't need to remake this and if they did remake it they needed to do a better job like when they made the live action cinderella i have that on blu-ray i watch it once a week it's my favorite happy movie of all time because they just they just translated it from animation to screen very well and they didn't change anything and the stuff they did change, it was like the stuff that made the old one kind of eh, weird, like the fact that Cinderella and the prince never like knew each other or talked or anything. So I really like that change in Cinderella. But Beauty and the Beast, yeah, it was, uh, it was bad. I really did like the Beast's new song because I'm a fan of the Broadway musical version. And the Beast has song in that, and even though I prefer that song, I like that they gave the Beast his song in this movie. Um, and it's a really beautiful song. Not sung by Dan Stevens, who also suffered the auto-tune curse, um, but Josh Groban's version, oh, it's like door to my soul, I love it. Luke Evans wasn't terrible, but he also couldn't sing, and the Gaston song, not only was it it wasn't really sung in that like really playful manner that the last one was sung in. This one was more like, let's let's make it all fancy. Um, but the thing that really got me, they left out my favorite line. If you're a huge fan of the old one, you probably know what I'm talking about. Me and my mom just turned to each other in the theater and were like, what the heck? Because it's the best line of that song. And they took it out. LaFu was okay. Josh Gad was a good choice for that role. Cogsworth. Eh. I just don't know that Ian McKellen's the best for voice work, voice acting. I mean, in his live action moments in the movie, like where it was Ian McKellen, um, it was fine. But the whole Belle's mom's backstory was really unnecessary. Why would you bring the plague into a Disney movie? It was just boring. I just kept sitting there going, come on, let's move on to the actual story. There's nothing good. But the main problem I had was Belle. Emma Watson as Belle, specifically. And other things they changed about Belle. But Belle was my favorite Disney princess growing up. My favorite. Mulan was very close. But Belle is my favorite. Mostly because Belle was the only one that I looked like in Hollywood and animation especially, you don't get brown eyes that often. I, or really dark brown hair. You don't get those. But the original Belle had both of those. And I loved that. And can I turn that away from me? You, every time like me and my friends would be Disney princesses as kids. Or even my flute section when I was in band did a assign a Disney princess to every person. I was always Belle. I was Belle. Because I'm a bookworm. I'm a nerd. And my personality is so much like Belle. And they took that away from me. Because they changed Belle. I'm not just talking about her appearance because Emma Watson is pretty. I think she's a lovely person. But she's just not what I pictured when I think of a live action Belle. And that's no fault of her own. I just wish it had been something the filmmakers would have taken more into account. Also, Emma Watson wasn't a good choice because she doesn't have a singing voice. And when you're remaking Beauty and the Beast, I mean, with all of these characters, with, like I said, the exception of Ian McGregor and Audrey McDonald, who have done musicals before, if you can't sing, you shouldn't be cast in something like this. Don't get me wrong. I love Emma Watson. I love Harry Potter. Perks of Being a Wallflower is one of my favorite movies of all time. But she just wasn't right for this role. It wasn't good. There's so much auto-tune that all I could do was cringe every time she opened her mouth to sing. And it hurt. <laughs> I have nothing against Emma Watson. Let me say this for the people in the back because every time I've talked about this movie before, I've gotten so much hate. I have nothing against Emma Watson. She was just the wrong choice for this role in this film. They could have picked someone better. Perhaps someone who's already been on Broadway, who has the singing chops or something like that. But no, they chose to go for 
more famous people instead of people who accurately filled the roles, which is kind of disappointing to me. Like, I wanted to love this movie so bad. I didn't. It was my favorite fairy tale. Another thing they did to Belle was their attempts to make her more feminist. Don't get me wrong, I consider myself a feminist, maybe not as hardcore as some people, but you did not need to change Belle to get that point across. Belle was already a very feminist character. She stood up for what she believed in, for what she thought was right, but she did it in a sassy way. Um, it wasn't just kind of like this bland, oh, I'm gonna get the job done kind of thing that um, they made this Belle to be. She was sassy, opinionated, and she wasn't having none of it, which I loved. Um, this Belle's just kind of like, eh. Okay. Gonna go invent a washing machine. And it just kind of hurt. <laughs> and another thing they did was how they designed, how they made her feel like she wasn't gonna stand for any frivolity or anything. She's supposed to be a major bookworm, but they made her into an inventor because that's more feminist. And while I do think it's good for girls to get into, like, inventing and science and stuff like that, you don't have to hammer it in all the time that that's what girls should do. Because I, I work in the English field, and I'm a, book, I'm a bookworm, I'm a book nerd, and, like, it's a very underappreciated field, but when that's becoming more important and... I don't know, it just kind of hurt that they kind of took that away from me. I get to, but I'm just being all personal and everything here. But another thing they did to Belle that really got on my nerves was her design. How they made everything more plain. How they, the yellow dress wasn't the yellow dress. It was just plain. It was just straight panels of stuff. Her hair wasn't elaborate or anything. It was just kind of really plain and boring and like in the early parts of the film she like constantly had her skirt hiked up and she was wearing hiking boots where this was the thing about Beauty and the Beast is that Belle was very feminine she didn't want to be living in this small town she wanted a grander life um she was still a very good person and stuff she was still very much a feminist person but they took that away from her they had they thought oh we have to make her more manly and tough for her to be a feminist and that's the main thing I hate about feminism nowadays is you think that being a feminist you can't be feminine you can't enjoy pretty things you can't dress pretty you can't be extravagant and it's just it's kind of wrong so I just felt like they did some character assassination on Belle if you've made it through this whole argument I applaud you um, if you disagree with me, please do not leave hateful comments below. Just maybe your opinion, not attacking me, because everyone is entitled to their opinions. And I mean that for everyone. If you want to talk about how you thought maybe this bell was a good interpretation, cool. Do not attack me. That's my opinion. Don't shoot the messenger. Beauty and the Beast. Not as good as it could have been. Thank you guys for watching. I love you all, and I will see you next time.